Benchmark estimates that the world will need 70% more natural graphite production in 2030 than it had in 2024. In four years and 10 months from now, the world needs 70% more production. That means a lot of projects have to get fast-tracked. Talking graphite here with James and ePower Resources. And James, exciting test work ahead for 2025. We brought some samples that we took during the summer to autumn field season last year, brought those to SGS, where we'll do some grade and metallurgical testing on them to show a flake size distribution. So we've taken the samples from four different showings on the property, surface showings. But we'll get those tested at the lab so that we can come up with a dot or an estimated dollar value based on the flake size distribution of the rock in each of those showings. Yeah, and uh, for those uh, not familiar with EPR, um, it is one of the top 10 graphite projects in North America, actually, and there are very few. I mean, most people probably heard of Nouveau Monde, kind of the biggest project in the making right now. And if we look at Nouveau Monde, uh, their share price is up 26% year to date. So it is looking uh, like the graphite market is set for uh, bouncing back right now. So the outlook sentiment should be quite positive for 2025 following the ban of China of uh, graphite exports or strong limitation, I should say, uh, in October last year. It looks as though graphite prices, according to the Benchmark Minerals Intelligence Index, hit bottom in March of 2024. It's up about something like 15% from that that bottom. Benchmark recently just came out with some new, uh, I guess, demand forecasts about graphite and, uh, and about the supply deficit. These numbers just came out in the last maybe one month or something like that. Benchmark estimates that the world will need 70% more natural graphite production in 2030 than it had in 2024. In four years and 10 months from now, the world needs 70% more production. That means a lot of projects have to get fast-tracked. And North America, again, only has 10 notable projects that can make an impact on the supply deficit uh, affecting manufacturing in North America. And there's only one small producing mine in Quebec. Yeah, and uh, just to add the context here, I mean, we've been invested now for about two years in EPR. Your plan is to monetize what's in the ground in AKA you are not looking to go into production, but you're uh, looking to sell uh, into the supply chain. So maybe a midstream company or could also be uh, an automotive company looking to secure the resource along the supply chain. Yeah, that, that that's right. We know that the manufacturing base in North America, and not just with EVs or EV batteries, but the defense industry as well is another one, or artificial intelligence, or any product manufactured product requiring power, they absolutely have to have access to graphite. And right now, there's just not enough to go around globally. You know, the Chinese are limiting or or nearly eliminating exports to North America. Some at-home production capacity of graphite absolutely has to be there. Yeah, our intent is really just to give them or provide them that essential link in their supply chain. So you've already got billions and billions of dollars of factories ready to produce things, but you need one thing to do that, and that's graphite. And talking about graphite, um, you disclosed the, the grades of the samples uh, that are now going into the lab, and we see grades between 30% and uh, 13%. Now, the flake size obviously also important, and the location in the ground with EPR, we have the graphite quite near surface, so low cost of extraction. We have a very large flake size, which is also important uh, because there are different grades of graphite. We'll put the link down below to our other videos where we've discussed that because you've got kind of graphite all the way up to nuclear power grade graphite, which is trading at $25,000, $35,000 per kilogram or as a per ton. James, do remind me. Yeah, some of it does go that high to, to uh, per kilo, yeah. Per kilo, so uh, phenomenal value. So it's all about the flake size and the percentage. Now, for those not experts in graphite grades, with gold, we know, okay, you need one gram per ton for that to be commercial viable, give and take. How does that compare in the graphite space? What would you normally be looking for for that co um, project to actually move ahead in North America? Globally, the typical graphite mine produces graphite at a grade 
of somewhere between 2% and 7% graphite in the ground, meaning that percent is the percentage of the rock that is graphite. So yeah, at Ted Episca, we typically or quite typically find grades in the teens and sometimes up to the 30s, 40s, or even 50s. With graphite, w- once you get those very high grades, sometimes that can mean amorphous graphite, which is the lower end of the flake size distribution scale in graphite, meaning you'll get less money for that graphite. But high grade and low flake size do not always correlate. One of the things we've noticed at Ted Episca is you can have grades in the teens and at the same time have a quite good flake size distribution, meaning the rock is skewed towards the larger flakes of graphite. Where And you pick up the rock, you look at it, it looks like a small pile of Frisbees there. And that has much more. Yeah, we've got some nice stock footage where we've had a look at the different flake sizes. And it is a magic material. I mean, when you see it in a glass jar, obviously you're not allowed to open it because it would make a huge mess. It's quite a, a, a crazy product from the way it behaves. It's I've not seen anything similar. So it's quite magical when you have this glass jar and, and the graphite is kind of rolling inside and you can really see how it uh, has some very interesting attributes to it as a product. Fascinating that, you know, those things you see rolling around in there have extreme heat resistance capabilities, extreme, you know, conductivity capability. And really it only comes from carbon, you know, was subjected to metamorphic events. So it started out as things like plants and leaves and trees and through, you know, the earth's process became that amazing material. Fascinating. And talking about commercials here, Jane, you're going to the lab, you're going to get the results. What are the next steps then for uh, later in 2025? Well, you know, first we will get the results back from SGS. I would guess that would be here before April the 15th. That will help us put that dollar value per ton on different surface showings on the property and helps us prioritize which targets then we go out and drill out a, you know, a resource on the property. You know, it could either be an in-house resource estimate. And remember, because these are surface showings, we don't really have to go very deep to drill that resource out. If we know the flake size distribution at showing number four is the best, We'll probably go over to showing number four and drill out an easy and simple resource from surface. And I mean, drilling always uh, does cost money. So um, what is the current cash situation? Are you looking to raise money later this year? The cash situation, as always, is dismal. We will look to raise some money probably in about a month. Also, you know, we got a head start on raising capital for the field season. It, back in December, we raised 150000 of flow through. So that's set aside and, and ready to go into the ground. We'll probably want to raise more, but we also have to look at the share price. We don't want to dilute investors so much because we already know, that, and really the graphite world already knows, this property is one of those 10 in North America that can be of help. Dressing it up a little bit more, you know, we have to make sure there's enough bang for the buck doing that and diluting, um, you know, the the uh, the shareholders like that. So if share prices remain the same, we would do a rather modest and simple field season, like try to drill out a resource, you know, and maybe even use the man portable drill, just going down to six meters. And uh, but that's enough to get some tonnage over, you know, not such a big piece of land too, and. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes absolutely sense. The market's already rebounded. You mentioned benchmark materials here um, that we had an all time low last year, but you're waiting for that to catch up more. Also, the junior space, the junior mining space in North America sentiment to pick up so that you need to issue less shares uh, for the same amount of progress, money in the ground to avoid any additional dilution. Yeah. That's right. We have to balance the two. Okay, James, exciting times. We look forward to the results from the lab and then fingers crossed. Great. Thanks, Arna. And thanks everyone for watching.